Hi everyone, tag 37, weaving material. This should be fun. Now I've got a tag and I've, because I've got a whole set of these dies, um, I'm using one that's smaller than my tag, so as it'll be inside. And I've got a bit of black on the hoop and I'm just going to use some Taylor's chalk. Oops, it's meant to be a straight line. So is that. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. Alright, so I've got a bit of grey thread because I thought I'm doing black. I wanted a black background, so when I cut them down to that size, I can make a little, maybe a one or two mil hedge like Anne was talking about. I think that's a bit, a bit wide. I thought I wouldn't mind having different sizes actually. I've noticed a lot of people have made them quite uniform on Instagram. Some are very, very nice. Some people are very creative. So I've got a palette that's sort of a match with this. So the browns, the dots on this are matching the flowers. Um, this was off, I think this little pack was off eBay. One of those packs of matching tiny squares, different colours and shapes and patterns, but they're all in a similar colour palette. Got to get a bit of this. Burgundy in. Okay, there's another one to get a bit more of it in and a bit more of the brown. And to have, right, that needs to be broken up with something lighter. Between the two, now I also have a bit of the, this beautiful soft old old pillowcase with its lovely little edge there. I'll put it the other way. What have I got? Nope. What else is under here? Alright, so we've got one of those to go the other way. Probably need, I think that's too thin, one of these. This is one of my favourites, but I'm not sure if I get a bit of that green in. Let's see if I can get a bit of the orange. Alright, so that will work that way. They're going to go that way. That, not quite long enough. one of those to go crossways and I've got one of those to go crossways. I don't think I want that in. Right, that, that works. Hope everyone is well. We're still in lockdown with the curfew at night. Still just 
plodding along, sometimes having little meltdowns, sometimes we're okay. All right, I like that. Now, I'll cut some more crossways. When I've got this down. So we're doing little back stitches. Beautiful sunny day here in Melbourne today. We're having uh, quite a few lovely days now that we're in spring. Sign of things to come, which is absolutely gorgeous. Now you'll notice that this is really frayed, so I'm just going to do my best to get it down. So uh, regional Victoria came out of their harsh lockdown last week and yet there are a couple more numbers. So there's, for the first time ever there's been a couple of cases that would end. It's the very first time and I did think I'd like to go out there but now I won't. Pretty sure they've got the border police up there stopping us going. Crazy times. So, not much really to report because there's not any exciting activities happening whatsoever. Other than walks in the park visits to Lily who's lost her voice and is unwell and uh, she's had a COVID test it's not COVID but I think she's just still had to go into work they just cancelled her work so she's been in one day a week so um, she's still going on the train so she's still you know likely to catch uh, a flu or a cold or something on the train so uh, that's what she's doing so I'm not visiting her at the moment all right here we go with the fiddly bits say that I've done this. I, I suppose we did a weaving pattern in the So For The Soul book. Maybe we did. I think we did. Alright. So that's up. That's up. No. That, that, I want the orange and the green. Let's do a bit of that. So let's see if I can keep that little bit of edge of That old pillowcase in there. I love that old pillowcase. Oh, I do love it so much. Right. Pin it down. Like 
Right, so this one is going to go so I can see the orange. I've already got one of these. I've already got one of those. So I've got some of that. I've what's that? There it is. I was just gonna say I haven't used one of those yet. Actually, I like, oh no, that's not right. It's meant to be the opposite, isn't it? There. Um, right, I, I like that I've added lighter colours in here. It kind of breaks it up quite a bit, which is good. What else has been happening? Really not much at all, I have to say. My binge watch of late. <laughs> well, okay, so as you know, I always have something I'm binge watching on YouTube. I've been watching still a thousand other scratch builders after watching Andy. Um, so that's a bit exciting. So if I can put a bit of this here. And that's been fun because I've ended up totally in the world of modelling, <laughs> making dungeons and forts and <laughs> all kinds of things. <laughs> and doll making. Oh, you know, when you get dolls and you kind of edit them like like Barbies and stuff like that but you break them up and make different things so I've had a good binge watch of all of that stuff so that's good that's given me a whole heap of uh, ideas all right that's worked out all right so now we sew down all around but my other Netflix binge watch has been Blind Spot. I might have mentioned that already, I can't remember. I feel like it's been ages since I did a video. Blind Spot, which is an FBI detective show. And thank goodness they just put the entire five seasons all on Netflix so you can really get a good binge watch in. Otherwise it's boring. Nothing worse than starting something and then it you get up to episode three and you realise you've got to wait a week. So what did I do that with? I did that with something the other day. Um, oh, I think it was on Binge. No, it wasn't. It was on... Oh, no, it was on Arrow. Uh, so if anyone ever, in the old days, watched Xena Warrior Princess, uh, there's a My Life is Murder show, which has one and a half seasons. And that's on Acorn, not Arrow. Gosh. Acorn TV. And that's not bad, actually. It's quite interesting because I was a great Lucy Lawless Xena Warrior Woman fan back in the day. Being the geek I am. Right, that's... Oh, it's just a little knot. Your knotty little knot, you... Uh, but yeah, it got to, um, I got through season one and then season two, it was week by week and I got to episode three and realised, oh no, I'm going to have to wait. So I cancelled my Acorn TV for now because I've done the whole Agatha Christie series, which I love. I, I had a, usually I'm a sci-fi buff all the time, 24-7, nothing else. But uh, this particular month or so, two months worth I have totally binged watched all the FBI shows all the English like Agatha Christie's and I finished up to where I got to with Lucy Lawless's I Am Murder or whatever it's called um, and then I went oh my goodness I've just 
think I've had enough. I've got to go and do a sci-fi thing. But then I saw this blind spot <laughs> and watched one, one episode and went, oh, I can't. I just can't stop watching it. I just can't. It's so good. It's like... It's like back in the day when you used to watch Y Five O, and you just couldn't wait for the next season to come out. We, you know, the one with Steve McGarrett. No, uh, no, well, they're both Steve McGarrett, aren't they? Not the old Hawaii Five O, the new Hawaii Five O. Set in Hawaii, of course, but in beautiful colour with the sea oh, and the surfing and the swimming. And oh my goodness, I'm so glad it's spring. Oh, I had to go and get a glass of water. It's funny, isn't it, when you don't talk to anyone all day? It's like, oh, didn't realise I had a froggy fruit. So, I think I'm still on season two of Blind Spot, but it has enough stuff to keep you going. Enough intrigue. By now I'm thoroughly sick of the bad person, the bad lady, even if she was in Picard. And I really liked her. And I know she's she's a great actress. You know, you know someone's a really good actor or actress when you don't like them if they're playing a bad guy. <laughs> don't you? It's like, oh, they're doing a really good job of that. <laughs> I'm going to have to start calling this Tag Natter Tuesday, TNT, that's what it's called now. <clears throat> For anyone in Australia, remember the old ACDC band with their song, TNT, Dynamite, Akadaka we used to call them. Fun fact. ACDC was the first live concert I ever went to at the Maya Music Bowl. Oh, don't you hate it when you do that? Not paying attention. Nattering away. See if I can cut the material without cutting my thread. Um, no, you know what? I'm going to do this and do that. So the story about ACDC was, I think I must have been, I don't know, 14 or 15, maybe, or maybe 15 or 16. It took a lot of convincing, but for some reason I'd been to a party at a friend's house uh, and my parents had let me go because I didn't know there were boys there and it was a pool party and while I was there, one of the girls tried to set me up with a guy who had two tickets to the ACDC concert and wanted to have someone to take, of course. Anyway, she set me up to go with him. I was a bit scared. I was pretty young. I was only, I think I was only 15. So it was a bit ludicrous to be going on a date with a guy with a car. Maybe I was 17, I don't know. I don't think I'd had a boyfriend at that stage, so it was a bit scary. And I'd understand if my parents didn't want me to go, but somehow I think we probably lied, as you do, when you're that age. You want to go somewhere and do something so you don't tell your parents the whole truth. Pay attention, Christina. Thread that. Anyway, I went with this guy and he... I think he must have taken a picnic blanket or something and we were sitting on the picnic blanket to see this band and I was just so terrified of him. You know, this is the picture you can imagine. This guy wants to take a girl he thinks is all right on a date and he wants to try and make a move and this girl's trying to manoeuvre off the end of the picnic blanket. <laughs> I just had a visual of how that must have looked. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. Those of you who love my little stories, there's a good one for you. <laughs> 
anyway, I was terrified of the poor guy who probably didn't even mean any harm. <laughs> well, he probably was being a 18-year-old boy. But this is the funny thing, if that wasn't already funny. I've always been a bit of a surfy chick, a bit of a hippie surfy chick. That's me. That's my style. Slightly boho even sometimes. But uh, this guy was a rocker, a full-on rocker with his full-on converted 50s car into I don't know what. And he had the hair slicked back and he had the whole full-on happy days <laughs> jacket and rolled up jeans and whatever the shoes were that they wore. <laughs> he didn't have a hope in hell. We were just cheese and chalk. What was he thinking? <laughs> I think he's, the girl that set us up was just like, oh, he's my friend, he's lonely, she's lonely, or single. I don't know if I was lonely at that age, didn't probably care, one hoot. <laughs> Let's set him up. Anyway, I got, I got a free concert, so. <laughs> That's a funny memory. That's not the whole story, though. Um... I don't think, I don't think I, was that when I drank some alcohol? I don't think so. I think that was another day. Um, yeah, I, I didn't drink alcohol that day, but uh, because it was the first concert I ever went to, um, my mum and dad, who were very strict Christians and terrified of me being drugged or whatever, um, made me promise that I would not take any of the food that the Hare Krishnas give out at those events and so I did of course <laughs> because they swore that the food would be um, drugged but you know what I just thought well these the Hare Krishnas are actually all about living healthy healthy living and you know being vegan and so mum and dad don't know what they're talking about being silly being overprotective so anyway I had I had a um they were giving out little rum balls like not rum balls they would have been cacao or something anyway you know what I mean like the little chocolate and coconut types of little balls that you make for a little snack they were giving them out so I had one of those no ill effect whatsoever of course <clears throat> years later I found out that actually in a lot of um, the Hare Krishna cooking food um, and in a lot of Pakistani food, they use what's uh, called asafoetida. I'm not sure if it's classified as a spice, but it actually is like turmeric or something like that. That's how it's used. But it actually does have calming, relaxing sort of properties properties so they actually were going around and making everyone om out on these little uh this balls <laughs> without it being an illegal drug it was a spice or herb or something or a tree root or I don't know what <laughs> so mum and dad technically were actually right <laughs> but seriously it wasn't like they've given me a great big chuff of marijuana or anything <laughs> Ah, uh, that's funny to remember those days. When we were so young and silly. That's cute. I think the end of the night. Um, I think it might have been an afternoon concert because I'm pretty sure Mum and Dad wouldn't have let me have stayed out late with some guy in his car at night time. So it must have been one of those afternoon. I think it was one of... Um, Bon Scott's probably did quite a few gigs after that, but it was definitely Bon Scott singing and Angus in his little school uniform. It, I hope it, no one will know what I'm talking about if you're not from Australia or from my era. But anyway, that was the original ACDC concert, the My Music Bowl. And Philip, someone on drums. Phil? Philip? I think. Was it Phil Rudd? Maybe. 
Oh, I can't remember. But anyway, I thought he was quite sexy, as you do when you're that age. Anyone up on the stage is sexy, isn't it? Like, because they've got that power. Anyway, I got home unscathed. Never to date that guy ever again. Because, oh my goodness. It was so uncomfortable. There was another time when I went to my music bowl. I think, I think it was a night time one and I was a bit older and I could go my own. And I went with some friends, but um, I think I drank a bit that one. I did have a few drinks. And that was one of those ones that was one of the those mixed concerts where there's a bit of everyone. And I think Sherbet was playing. Skyhooks. Goodness. All that back in the day. But I did have a couple of drinks. And I remember I was I went to the toilets, which was right around the back of the stage. And as I was walking back to where where we were sitting I must have been at art school because I remember I think I was with a couple of the girls from my first art school that I went to doing window dressing of all things and I stood on the curb and my not my big toe but my second toe is actually a bit longer than my big toe and I caught it on the curb I'm going off I am going right off here, right off over. Anyway, I caught it on the curb and the ambulance men didn't think there was a problem. Just having a double stitch here. But I swear it still hurts now today, so I reckon I broke it. The only broken bone I've ever done in my body. And I think I know there's a couple of nurses who watch this, but I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, you can't really put a plaster on a broken toe. You just have to leave it and let it mend itself. Well, I really went off there, didn't I? Oh, well. Yeah, that, that was it, so I, I probably did break it. But uh, it's not much I could do about that at that time. Just had to rebel against the parental authority and give it a go, what it's like to be drinking at a concert. What a rebel. out. Now someone, who was it? Uh, I don't know, I don't think I know her name, but someone on Instagram had put little patterns sewn in. I think sometimes people just have the initials and the surname so you don't want to say, hey you. Alright, I'm going to I'm going to take it out. I can probably do them outside once I've taken that off. So there we are. That was a little walk down memory lane of my little concert going days. Keeping those. I can probably be a bit more careful and tuck that back under. Oh, 
how cute. All right, so that's made it a bit wobbly, but I still like it, and I still want to do just a little border around the edge like this. Sometimes I think these are dear diary sessions. <laughs> I did see a sequin and I was going to put the sequin on, but uh, oh well, I think I'm just going to do a couple of little French knots or something. Group of three is always good. And there we have it. Tag 37, definitely past halfway for sure by now. And I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching and being here with me. Lots of love and hugs and hearts. And I will see you soon. Bye for now.